Hey guys, thanks for watching another video. I really appreciate it. Today I'm talking about weed killing and what is the most effective way to kill weeds. I've done this once before and I've changed up the formula. I've added two new products that I've yet to see anyone talk about and two products that are just going to be always have to be a part of this natural organic weed solution. Now there's a little bit of controversy about using certain things, but there's just certain things you're going to have to use if you have a weed problem, but this will work. It will get rid of weeds in your garden, in your driveway, in walkways, wherever you have a lot of weed problems, this will work. And I've used it and I'm going to, I've uploaded a previous video to my YouTube shorts that shows the after results. So if you go back to my YouTube shorts, you can see that as well, but I'm going to put this together today and demonstrate it in two different ways. So the product that I'm referring to that's causing controversy or people are saying don't spray on your garden is just common dish soap. And I agree that it's not a natural product. It has artificial dyes in it and there's chemicals in it. So I've replaced that with something that works equally well and is perfectly natural. People consume it in salads and they eat it every day. So you probably have some in your kitchen pantry even as we speak. Now the first thing and the really the main ingredient is what the powerhouse that makes this work is the is the vinegar. Now this is 45% vinegar. I ordered it off Amazon. I'll put a link to it. And then this is the standard household vinegar. It has 4% acidity. Usually it's around 4 to 5% depending on which brand you buy. But this is really the key ingredient in this weed killer. Without this, it's not going to work. But the other two ingredients are equally important, or other three ingredients are equally as important. They will work all in combination together. And it's as natural as you can get unless you want to go to a chemical herbicide. That's your only alternative that I know of. Unless you want to go around with a blowtorch and try to kill weeds that way and that's a, that will kill the weeds but you're eating up natural gas and it's a real headache and if it's on a hot day you're going to be even hotter so i like using this this is what i use i use it in two different size containers and i'm going to demonstrate that as well so the next ingredient that's going to be added to the formula is lemon juice i did not use lemon juice last time and i did more research it's, like i say everyone consumes lemon juice is completely natural but it acts as a desiccant that dries out the weed or the plant the leaves and this will help in conjunction with the vinegar. So it just boosts that. And of course, you're not going to use an entire bottle. You're just going to use a part of a bottle. So that's the second ingredient in our powerful weed killing formula. Now, the next ingredient is what I've used to replace the soap. And it's all natural. I eat it in salads all the time. And most people, some people like it, some people don't, but it's completely natural. It can be consumed and people eat it all the time is olive oil. And what it's doing is replacing the soap as an adhesive to make the formula stick to the plant. And so it's perfectly safe. It works in two ways. It, like I said, it works by making the formula stick to the plant. Second way, it suffocates the plant and helps the weed to die. So that's what we're aiming for is to killing the weed. So that's this, that's the next product. And the last product I'm going to talk about, there's two different variations and I'm going to show you a new way to prepare the, the last the last component of our weed pro killing product. Okay. So the last product is going to be either Epsom salt, or common table salt and you can use either one both of them work equally well it just depends on what you have in your cabinet but either one i've discovered in my smaller sprayer if the salt isn't completely dissolved in the solution sometimes it can stop up your sprayer so i'm going to show you a new way to prepare the salt to make sure that it goes out of the sprayer evenly and without any problems with clogging or congestion in the line so this is an unusual item i purchased a few years ago as an emergency stove and i really like it it's really it's really nice it uses butane gas and some people may have heard of it if you've ever went to a buffet you've probably seen one as just a temporary st at a temporary station for cooking in different parts of a buffet but this works really well out in the greenhouse i can just store it in its case it's around here somewhere but this is a great item if you have an emergency um, i'll bring you in closer but i'll try to show you it came from south korea Actually, I ordered it from South Korea, and it, this was many years ago, three or four years ago. And now they're available on Amazon, and I like it. They, they make some others that are cheaper, I've seen, but this one I really like. It's really well made, and the price on Amazon is actually $50 lower than I paid. So I'll put a link in the description for that as well if, if you're interested. But it's a great survival tool if you have a power outage or something like that. But anyways, I'll get on to dissolving our salt and showing you how to do that. I'll bring you in closer too for that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to light our stove. It's self-lighting. It's got a little ignition thing there and we're going to do that. Okay. It lights super easy and then you can turn down the heat, but we're going to keep the heat a little bit on the high side. We want to heat up some water quickly. 
And we're going to do that. This pot's a little bit small for... All right, we're going to heat up this water kind of quickly. Okay, so we've got our stove lit, our water's heating up, and we're just going to carefully add that to our water. We're going to allow that salt to dissolve. And the reason I'm doing this again is because I want it to get through the uh, pump without clogging or having any issues. Make sure you wash your pump out after the fact. If there's any metal parts in there and the salt residue remains, you may have a problem with rusting and you just don't want that. Make sure you clean it out. Run water through it thoroughly and that is a way to preserve your, the life of your sprayer. All right, so our, we're gonna use our trusty chopstick here to stir the solution so we can just dissolve the salt as much as possible. And this thing heats up so fast. All right, so in just a matter of minutes, this thing is heated to a nice rolling boil. I'm gonna cut this off and we're gonna let it cool off before we add it to our mixture. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to our one gallon picture. And I'm gonna carefully do that because that water is scalding hot. And this should cool down the water, but the salt is completely dissolved. And so I'm going to clean up the table and show you how to move on to the next step. Okay, so we have our salt and water mixture. I'm going to top it almost all the way to the top. We're going to leave some space for the final ingredients to our recipe. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the top. Now the next ingredient is our olive oil. That is what's going to help smother the weeds and also help this formula stick to the plant. So we just want a very small amount and I would guesstimate about four, three to four ounces. And so we're going to mix this again once we're through and make sure it's well mixed. Now the lemon juice is something that can be expensive depending on where you buy it. I buy it at the big box store at Sam's or Walmart, and I think that's a better deal. So we're going to put half a cup of lemon juice into our formula. Now, if I was using my large sprayer at all four gallons, I would just triple the ingredients. But as far as right now, I'm going to start out with my small sprayer. This sprayer is really one of my favorites. I've got just a small area of weeds in the garden. So I'm going to um, do that, demonstrate that first. And then I'll demonstrate the backpack sprayer with just a small amount because I'm not going to spray a large area today. I'm just going to demonstrate about a three foot circle. And then we'll come back later in a YouTube short showing you the results in 24 to 48 hours later. Now, the next thing I'm using is our low percentage vinegar formula. This is going to go in the small container. If I was using my large backpack sprayer for a huge area, I'd probably want to go with my 45%. And I think that's going to be a better option. But we're using this in just a small area in the garden. So we've got two cups of vinegar, our lemon juice, our olive oil, our dissolved salt. And so we have four ingredients. We're going to stir this up. Just give it a nice stir to make sure that olive oil, it doesn't, it doesn't want to, it wants to uh, come to the top. So we want to kind of mix it in quite a bit more. I'm just going to keep stirring and then we're going to add it to our small sprayer. We'll go out in the garden and I'll just demonstrate where we're going to spray. And then that way I can follow up with a YouTube short that demonstrates what happened in a short amount of time. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up my small handheld sprayer. This beats the heck out of a hand pump sprayer. I've used this one for about three years and I've got about, I think I have three of these now. So I'm just going to carefully pour that in there and fill it to the top. And so I'll, I'll leave a link to the sprayer. I've talked about it so much, but it's just one of those things I use all the time in the garden. And it's just a few pumps and it's pressurized and I've, Use one for weed killing, one for fertilizing, one for homemade insecticide, and I'll link that video to the homemade insecticide. But you can spray up, you can spray forward, you can spray down. It's really a great little sprayer. And it beat, like I say, it beats having to hand pump because it'll wear your hand out if you're working over a large area or if you have arthritis or something like that. So this is a great little sprayer. We're going to go out to the garden and I'll demonstrate using it on some weeds that are growing right next to an old vegetable patch that has now been torn down for the winter but we still want to get rid of those weeds we don't want them to take over all winter long so as you can see the weeds are in my pathways in between my raised beds and that's really an annoyance um, it's just a problem that i have every year but i used to use the really strong chemical products that you can buy 
And so I really don't like using those. That's just kind of a last resort if nothing else works. But this is great. This works every time. It'll knock it down. And of course, over time, the seeds are protected and they hatch back out. So I'm just going to shake it each time I use this because I want to make sure the olive oil is well mixed along with the other ingredients because the olive oil is what allows it to stick to the weeds. So as you can see, this little sprayer does one heck of a job. And I definitely can smell the vinegar. It's strong. I would absolutely say don't use this on a windy day. If you have a sensitivity to vinegar or anything like that, use gloves. If you're afraid you might breathe some of it, wear a mask and glasses and just make sure you don't get this anywhere near your face. I've used it so many times, I'm not really that frightened by it, but some people on a windy day might make the mistake of thinking that they're okay. So just be careful and don't breathe any of this. It will irritate your lungs, sinuses, and you won't be happy if you get that into your nasal passages. So there we go. We're going to come back in a day or so and I'll show you what happens there. But that is in my small sprayer and I'm going to show you, I'm going to put on my backpack sprayer, use the rest of our mixture and I'm going to go out to an area that's never ending with weeds and show you how that works. Okay guys, this is my chape and sprayer and this is something I've all, also switched over in the last couple of years that I really like using. I used to have the pump kind and you'd have to pump it the whole time you're outside. And in the hot summertime, it was brutal and I hated it. This one has a battery pack. It uses um, the standard batteries, batteries from Black & Decker drills, a 20 volt battery. I'll let you hear it. Let's see if you can hear the motor start. So it's empty. I need to, I don't want to run the motor when there's no, no liquids in it. I'm just going to carefully pour this in there. And remember on a windy day, don't do this. Wait till it's a very calm day. And no matter how hard I try, I'm going to make a mess. All right. Now I'm going to, and this has a filter. So if you had anything in the water, this is a great little filter to filter anything out that might might have been in there, like a leaf or something, but it works great. So we're going to put our top back on. We're going to cut our sprayer on. You can hear the motor running there. It fills up the line. And so as soon as you hit the sprayer, it releases it. It works great. And you, when you're spraying it, you're not anywhere near the, uh, the vinegar coming out. So you're less likely to breathe it. So that's one thing. I love these chafed and sprayers. Uh, when it came out, I bought this, I think, in 2020 or 2019 or 2020. And I've been one of the best things I've purchased for the garden. It works in different ways for me, and it saves me a lot of work. Okay, guys, so I've got my backpack sprayer on, and I look a little ridiculous in it, but it works great. The main thing to remember, windless day, very calm day, and it's best to do it on a sunny day. It's a little bit overcast today. That's why the greenhouse is a little bit darker than usual. But just remember to try to use it on the hottest, sunniest day you can, and a windless day. That's two key components to putting this out. Okay, so let's get started on killing some weeds. Okay guys, here's the area we're going to demonstrate this on. I'm going to do about a six foot circle and I'll come back in a day or two and shoot another video showing you the results. So if you'll come back and watch that or look for it in a YouTube short. Okay, so let's head back into the greenhouse and I'm going to talk to you about some more possible uh, issues with using this product and everything you should know when you're using it and everything you should make sure you do and don't do. So we've changed up our solution quite a bit from the last video and I think it's a better product now. It's a safer product especially because we've added these to the lemon juice and the olive oil. You have your choice of different types of vinegar based upon strength. If you're doing a huge, huge area, you're probably going to want to go with 45%. And I think you can get even higher, but the 45% is on Amazon. I'll put a link to that. This is just standard kitchen vinegar, 4 to 5%. You can choose either one. If you're trying to do a small area, you can do that. Your salts, you have the option of just normal table salt or Epsom salt. Either one is good. I don't really like this Epsom salt because it is scented. It was made, I think, for people's baths, and I just don't... Uh, I don't like scented things, so that, that's one of those things. But that is our products. Now, there's a couple more things I didn't talk about. One is blue food coloring. If you want to see where you've sprayed, 
add about a teaspoon of blue food coloring to your sprayer and you can come back later. A lot of lawn care companies will do this to their fertilizers so they can see where they've sprayed uh, herbicides or fertilizer so they'll know. So you can do that. That's a little trick that I did last time about adding the blue food coloring so you can see where you're spraying. So anyways, we've thrown away the Dawn and we're not going to use that. So the Dawn is over. But uh, we've replaced it with something that's completely natural and it's safe. So that's what I like is trying to get as natural and as safe as we can. Now, there's a lot of people that say don't use vinegar in the garden. It lowers the pH. That's true, but you can do a soil amendments. But the problem is if you have a terrible weed problem, you don't have a lot of options. I don't like using the chemical industrial weed killers. I'd like to try to go as natural as possible. So you're kind of in a catch 22 there. So this is what I use. If it, if it was all nothing else, I would use the other products, but there is other options. Someone had asked me in the previous video, will it work on poison ivy? Yes, but you're going to probably need to make this the 45% and spray it directly on the leaves, possibly two times rather than just once. So I want to give you a quick rundown of all the precautions involved in using this. You want to wear gloves. Uh, don't splash it near your face. If you think you're susceptible to doing that, wear some glasses and a mask. Uh, keep your pets out of that area until it's dry. That's not highly toxic, but it can make your pet's uh, sinuses irritated and pets are always going around, especially dogs going around and sniffing of everything. So make sure that the pets are off that area for 30 minutes to an hour and allow the product to dry. You want to make sure you use this on a sunny day where there's not a chance of rain and the sun will intensify the effects of the weed killer formula we've used. So that's two things to remember, sunny day and no chance of rain on that day. If it does rain, you're going to need, need to reapply it once the weeds have dried out. Now, if you're trying to spray this near beneficial plants or a plant you don't want to harm, you're going to want to take a large piece of cardboard and hold it up or prop it up near the plant you want to save and then spray the area where the weeds are. So that's one thing you want to make a barrier between where you're spraying for the weeds and the beneficial plant. So make sure you don't forget that a large piece of cardboard will save your plant from being accidentally sprayed. Now, once you've applied the, the uh, formula on your weeds, you're gonna wanna monitor, monitor those weeds and sit, check for wilting and see if it's working. It may take 24 hours to 48 hours to show any significant signs of damage to the weeds. It depends, some weeds are more persistent than others, which is another thing I'm gonna say is it may require multiple treatments for really stubborn weeds. But most weeds that I've done on this in the past, they get knocked out in 24 hours. It's just amazing, amazing. There'll be a yellow cleared path of dead weeds. Now about storing the product or the formula once you made it, it's generally going to be effective or potent for about one week. After that, it's going to lose its potency. So you want to make just enough for the area you're going to spray. If you have to store it, store it in a cool, dry place. But you want to try to use it all at once because it starts to lose its effectiveness over time. Once you go to pull it out of storage, if you do store it, make sure you shake it so the olive oil will be mixed well with the water so it will stick to the leaves as you spray them. Now, if you're applying this on a regular basis, it's gonna alter, most likely alter the pH of the soil. So you wanna test it with a really good test kit like this or a test probe type tester, and that's what I use to test it. Uh, you can go for as little as 20 to $30 for a low-end tester up to hundreds of dollars for a professional level, but you're gonna get pretty good results from a, uh, this tester and many testers. I'll put a link to the two testers I own, and uh, I think you need to monitor that. But you can add soil amendments to it, but you have to remember the richer you make your soil, you're gonna have uh, weeds come back. So you might wanna consider if it's a continual problem, putting down a thick layer of mulch or pine straw and under the mulch, you can even do a trick that I've heard a lot of people say, put down cardboard first, that's gonna break down over time, and then put your, put your mulch on top of that. So guys, that is the end of the video for Natural Weed Killer 2.0. And we've eliminated one product that we didn't really care for and added in two more that are completely natural and that are gonna affect the weeds in a negative way and just wipe them out. So anyways, I wanna say thanks for watching. I really appreciate you coming back. I'm melting like a snow cone in August because it is blazing hot in the greenhouse. So anyways, I hope you guys have a great day and please like and subscribe.